Because my eyes have seen the King. I must tell all the world, worship Him. In all the nations, in all the world, where He sends me, yes, I will go. I will go. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have granted unto us. We thank you for bringing us here, each and every one of us here safe, safe tonight. As we are about to sing, dear Lord, I pray that you bless our voices, dear Lord, and I pray that we'll sing to your names, honor, and glory is my prayer. Amen. Amen. We'll start off tonight by singing some choruses. <laughs>
1.63 at the cross. stand as we take our team song. Darkness prevailed, Israel was played in the days of Elijah.
Mighty God, we come into your presence tonight to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love towards us. We ask our praise unto you, dear God, because you live, we are alive at this moment. And we present tonight's proceeding into your hands, and we pray, O oh God, that you move out with your power so that men and women here underneath this tent and those listening nearby can hear your sweet, small voice saying, this is the way you walk in it. We pray for the preacher tonight that you will anoint him with power from on high. So as he stand here, we're going to be like the watchman standing on the wall of Zion, sung in the trumpet, dear God, letting men and women know that tomorrow is too late and today is the day of salvation. So we present every proceeding into your hands, those who have to officiate, the singers, the musicians, the ushers, the Bible workers, the team here at this uh, Megafest 2023, Days of Elijah, Gospel Extravaganza. We pray, O oh God, that you will just take charge of every proceeding and let your name be glorified and may heaven come down and glory fill our soul. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Each time I stop and take the time to look around me I see the signs of his appearing everywhere Things he said will come to pass and now before us and I can feel the strange excitement in the air. The sun is there now. Our Lord is coming. He'll be returning for you and me. Oh, I've been watching and I've been waiting. Just any day now, his face I'll see. There is longing in my heart for his returning. I'll gladly leave behind his trials here below for this journey has been long and I'm so weary and Lord I feel I'm so much closer now just any day now our Lord is coming He'll be returning for you and me. Oh, I've been watching and I've been waiting. Just any day now, his face I'll see. Just any day now, his face I'll see. Asking everyone to stand, please. And the voices together as we sing. You've got some grace tonight. If you rather have Jesus, you can praise him. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather.
before you another night another night of mega fest 2023 another night lord where we understand our incompetence and our inadequacies another night that we have a start that we are establishing that you are god and you are god alone and tonight because we know we humble ourselves before you oh lord as i humble myself before you speak to me speak through me i thank you lord for holding up the weather Oh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for holding up the weather. You've given us a nice day today. You have the wet, the wet all around the place. You've dried it up for us as much as possible. And, Lord, we, our people, have come out in their numbers to hear a word from you. Disappoint us not tonight, Lord. I pray that you would remove self and anything in my life that may misrepresent you tonight. I pray, Lord, that I would be a true example of what I preach and I pray that tonight that as I speak your word, that your word would be so powerful and convicting that men and women would rush to the altar, giving you their hearts and making you Savior and Lord of their lives. I humble myself before you. Bless the projector guys, the musicians, our appeal singer, all those myself, all those who have an active part to play in the declaration of your word and your waiting congregation. Speak to us. Speak to our hearts. Minister to us. And give your word that conviction to the hearts of men and women as we humble ourselves before you in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people say amen and amen you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord such a delight to be with you again tonight I thank God for his goodness I want to thank our pastors and elders of the different churches and members for your support and your hard work and for our Bible workers on the field. We really, we really appreciate it. You know, I, as an evangelist, I always tell people, you know, I'm, I'm not one of the evangelists who only know what evangelism is by preaching from the pulpit, but, you know, going out on the field day and night and sometimes leaving the field at seven o'clock to get to a tent and you're exhausted and you come onto the tent and you have to listen to the preacher preach. And still encourage people to come to the altar. It takes, it, takes, it takes some serious physical effort. And I've experienced it myself. And I know some parts. You may think that the evangelist is the one working the hardest in the crusade. But sometimes the evangelist is the one working the least out of the crusade team. <laughs> because yes, you have to prepare the sermon. And yes, you have to get ready. But, and you preach for an hour or, and do appeal and whatever it is. But some people have to be on the field the whole evening, whole day working with people and tonight I don't take it for granted. May God bless you. I want to thank the prayer band for praying for me tonight and every night and for the success of the campaign so far. And I, tonight is prayer night and tonight um, we're going to lift up our burdens at, at Calvary and um, we're going to ask Pastor um, Isaac to give us that prayer tonight and I'm putting him on the spot but I'm, I'm, I'm giving him early notice <laughs> so at the end of the message tonight that he will be the one responsible for lifting us up before the throne of the Lord. And, and bringing the people of God closer as to the throne room of Jesus as he approaches the throne of God boldly. What's the topic for tonight? Talk to me, Naman. Talk to me. What's the topic for tonight? 
So it, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like I have to leave this side and come down here. I mean, you guys look at down there, the Grenadians. The obvious song like Vinci people. <laughs> <laughs> What's the topic for tonight? Better than wet fit. Let me go up there. Let me give them a chance to redeem themselves. Because you know I'm a Vinci. Well, I'm Dominican Vinci. Um, what's the topic for tonight? Oh, all in trouble, all in trouble, all in trouble. Yeah, all in trouble, all in trouble. In trouble. Tonight, since the carnival thing came into existence. I remember back in the day when I was very young. <laughs> I'm still young, so I said very young. <laughs> you used to see carnival, and carnival was about jab jab, about juve, and all these kind of things. But in recent years, they have added a component to carnival called the wet fit. Do they have wet fit in Grenada? No, no. I remember it like it was yesterday. You know, in 2001, I think it was. That's more than 20 years ago. I went to visit my sister. And you know, you know you're still young them days and, you know, and so on. So she told me, Brent, have you ever seen Carnival? I said, me? Nah, that is not for me. She said, but how could you tell people don't go carnival if you haven't seen what carnival is like? So we would not go, but we would stand at the edge. And when they're passing, you will see. So we got up early in the morning, put on clothes, stood at the side of the road from about 2 o'clock in the morning. It was juve time. And we were waiting for the crowd to come up the road to see what carnival looks like. Well, I started waiting for the entourage and the whole crew. And I heard the loud song system coming and the bass line that you feel it all in your chest. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> and you see people dancing and jumping up and so on and so forth. And I remember, I remember them days. It had a song out that year. I mean, I, I don't want to tell you what, what, anything about that song. But something about I taking away somebody woman. And I know you're going to cause confusion and all them kind of thing there. I think that was around the same time that song came out and so on. And, and I remember I was standing at the side of the road and people were passing, dressed up with less, little to nothing. And they're walking on the road and dancing and jumping up the place. And see me with my clean shirt and my clean pants and my nice shoes. With a visor hat. You know them old time days. You know that visor that you used to use. And thing and so on. And I stand up there. Pastor Bowen and, and Pastor Gordon. And I stand up there looking at carnival. And people passing and see me looking all clean. And they all messy. And so forth. And a man could not take it anymore. So when he was passing close to me. He just dashed me with some water. And threw powder on me. You could imagine the shame. <laughs> that the Christian boy. <laughs> who did not go carnival. <laughs> Coming home early hours of the morning with wet up and powder all over me. To cut a long story short, is the last time I ever went close to carnival. I said, be the man say, if you if you, if you fret powder, don't play mass. If you don't want to get involved in this thing, stay away from it and so on. So I stayed away. But they brought in the wet fet. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, there's a massive wet fet called H2O. And people from all over the Caribbean go to St. Vincent for H2O. It's one of the biggest carnival events on the calendar in St. Vincent. As a matter of fact, uh, Pastor Bessie, good to have Pastor. But yeah, it's good to see you. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, um, it was so big that this year, the promoter of that show, that is Luke Boye, and the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Greenings, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, had a war sometime last year. And because of that, he said they're shutting down all the big facilities in a way to get after the man, per se. And, and wet fat was no more in St. Vincent this year. And people in St. Vincent make noise till they weak. All before I left St. Vincent is riot and noise and calling radio station, making noise. How dare the Prime Minister could close down all the big sporting facilities and wet fat is the biggest thing on the carnival calendar and people calling from everywhere and who takes side and who making noise all because of wet fat. When you go to, I heard one lady say that there is nothing better than wet fat. 
But what happened? Wet feta is usually used. Um, um, it usually takes place on a Saturday night. So on Sunday morning, when you drive on the road at, at seven, eight o'clock in the morning, people now coming from wet fed H2O. And one thing I can testify, I can tell you, is that when you see people coming from wet fed, they look dirty and they smelly. Anybody still home? It is amazing that they are going to a place with water. But they are coming from the place dirtier than they went, they came, and more stink than they came. Because it seems to me when they leave wet fat, they become dirtier than when they came. So, and, and, and somebody, and, and that's why nowadays when soccer artists sing, they sing everybody stink and dirty. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, even the wet fat is a stink and dirty place. I don't know how people go to carnival because no stink and dirty and people sweating, jamming up on me and rubbing up on me. At all, at all, at all, uh, Pastor Gittens. Let me stay at me home. If I want a wet fat, I will go in my shower. <laughs> it seems to me that the intention of going to a wet fat is to leave dirty. All kinds of colors of powder. But tonight I came to let you know that when you go to the wet fat of man, you live dirty. But when God brings you to the water. Hey, somebody help me preach tonight. I said somebody help me preach tonight. When you go to a wet fat pastor, Gittens, you leave, you come clean and you live dirty. But when you go to the water of Jesus Christ, you come dirty and you live clean. If I'm talking truth, somebody shout hallelujah in the house of the Lord tonight. Tonight, 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 our quest takes us to the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 5, a very familiar story. 2 Kings chapter 5, reading from verse 1. We are reading verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, no name and no who? Captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was, a, he was also a mighty man in valor, but, I said, but, he was a leper. Somebody say leper. Put the next verse there for me. And the, the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel. A little girl, somebody said a little maid, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. Put the next verse, the last and not, and not least, last, last but certainly not least. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Somebody say amen. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Naaman had it together in his career. His family, his influence, his respect, and his reputation. He was a success story in many areas. But there was one but in his life. Anybody still under the tent? I have come to recognize and realize past the best tonight that no matter how good you are, there is always something that adds a but to our lives. Can I preach? Can I preach tonight? But the but in Naaman's life was serious and life-threatening. You see, Naaman, leprosy was an incurable disease of decay. Hey, stay with me. What really was happening to Naaman is that he was wasting away from the inside out. So Pastor Isaac, the man who was looking good on the outside. He was a five-star general on the outside, well respected on the outside, but he was dying and rotting from the inside out. And there are many people tonight. I said there are many people tonight who look good smell good, work good, rich and have money and reputation, but deep down they are dying on the inside. Who am I preaching to tonight? And you can fool people, but you cannot fool those in your house. Can I preach tonight? You see, it's easy to fool people on the outside. I always tell people, if you want to know what a man is like or a woman is like, talk to their wife or their husband. Yes, it's true. You see, because the easiest thing to do is when you're outside, pretend that you are good. Hello? 
When you see me in green leather hair and you see me with my suit and preaching the word of God in, in, in crusade, you would believe that Pastor Brent says he's a good man. But if you really want to know who I am, call Anya. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and tell Anya, Anya, the man preaching a storm under the tent. But who really is Brent? <laughs> How does he treat you in the house? <laughs> How good of a father is he to his daughter? Are you still living in the house of the Lord? Because some people live to impress others. And you see, if you live to impress others, you will be a good actor. And some people in the world can get Oscars because of their acting ability. Anybody still home? You come and you act like you have it all together. You come and you act like you, you have, you're well consecrated and dedicated to the Lord. You come with a smiling face. But sometimes you are dying on the inside. I still remember Chelsea Chris from 2019. The girl won uh, Miss USA and she was in Miss Universe. And she did well in the top 10. And so pretty, so beautiful, so eloquent, so dedicated. And that girl threw herself from a building in New York and committed suicide. And people could not understand how could a beautiful, successful, talented, rich girl kill herself. You see, it's one thing to have money and fame. But what breeds true joy and happiness is what comes from the inside. If I'm talking through somebody say amen in the house of the Lord tonight. Hey. Rotting from the inside out. You're bright, but you're dying. You can preach, but you're dying. You have a good job, but you're dying. And the thing is, you can cover a multitude of sin. Talk to me now, please. I remember one time... I was rushing out the house at time and, and, I, and I threw a shirt on me and a tie and I threw my suit on me and I went to a place whole day and then we had choir festival in the evening and then a sister came to me and she said, pastor, pastor, the place hot, hot, hot. Why do you still have, why do you still have the suit? I said, sister, I'm a pastor. I just make sure I have my suit on. She said, pastor, you know that is not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I said, Sir, sister, see that you want to know. Let me give you the whole truth. You see, when I ran out of the house, I didn't iron the shirt before I came out. So I make sure I have my jacket on because a jacket can cover a multitude of sin. Are you still living in the house of the Lord? I see the pastors them smiling. <laughs> I say, I say, I see the pastor them smiling because certain times, sometimes it's a shirt that we never plan to use. So we make sure we throw a jacket and they wonder why we have the jacket hold up close. So because you remove the jacket, you will see waves from the Atlantic Ocean. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? A jacket covers a multitude of sin. But let me tell you something. No matter how broken your inside of your life is, if you come to Jesus, he can change your situation around and God can make things work well in your life. Let's go down deeper. Let's go down deeper in this thing. Like Naaman, I believe that there are many good looking and loved persons suffering from what I call the dead man syndrome. They are thriving on the outside, but dying on the inside. They smile into the crowd, but they cry in front of their mirrors. Hey, help me preach somebody. They are loved by others, but they do not love themselves. They smile for the camera, but they are hurt and depressed on the inside. If you are tired of living and want something new, there is hope. Oh, somebody help me preach the thing tonight, no man. I said, if you are tired and living, tired of living and you want something new, there is hope. If you find yourself wasting away, there is hope. If your back is against the wall, there is hope. If you get up in the morning and you wish you would die, there is hope. If you find yourself discouraged and despondent, there is hope. If you find yourself ready to give up, there is hope. Because the little girl said, I may be small, but I know somebody. Hey, help me, bong, help me preach. Bong somebody. Bong somebody tonight. Say, neighbor, neighbor, there is hope. I say, neighbor, there is hope. 
The little girl said, I may be small, but I know somebody. I may be in captivity, but I know somebody. I might be a young man from Botica, Dominica, but I know somebody. I may not be the best preacher or evangelist, but I know somebody. I'm imperfect, but I know somebody. Sometimes I make mistakes, but I know somebody. And let me tell you something. Some call him Jesus. I call him the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. I call him the author and the finisher of my faith. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ tonight. Watch it now. I came here for a word tonight to tell somebody under this tent that it is no secret what God can do for you. Hey somebody. God can take your ordinary life and transform it. Hey. I always tell people I remember when they said I would never become anybody. I remember one time a lady said to me, young you will never become a man. Are, are you still living, brother? Lady, watch me in my face and tell me I will never become a man. Now, there is a rumor, there was a rumor going in the village at that time, Pastor Gittins, that she was a... Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get the name. That's all you call it in Grenada. In Dominica, we say she was a sukuya. <laughs> Some people say larger bless. Somebody say jack o' lantern. Some people say old egg or old egg. <laughs> Are you still with me? They had all kind of rumors about this lady. So when she said that to me and I went home and I told my parents and my siblings, they said, Brent, your goose cook. <laughs> because if the jack o' lantern and the sukuya and the larger bless tell you that you will never become a man, trust me, you will never become a man. What they did not understand that the larger blessed probably had power, but my God is all powerful. <laughs> Hey, somebody let me preach this thing. <laughs> let me tell you something. I remember when I was leaving Dominica to go overseas and so on. They said to me, you will never accomplish what you want to accomplish. The same jack-o'-lantern lady, they say, said you will never make it anywhere in life. So I make sure when I graduate and I became a pastor, I went back to Dominica and looked for the larger bless. Are you still with me? And sure, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he has done for me. I don't care what people tell you. If you put your hands in the hands of God, God will turn your life around and God will give you a success story. If I'm talking truth, somebody shout hallelujah in the house of the Lord tonight. So watch it now, watch it now. So, so Naaman goes to Elisha, the man of God. Are you, are you still home? Second Kings chapter 5, verses 9 to 10. Let me tell you, at first he went to a politician here. He went to the king first. But there are some problems, like I told you earlier in the crusade. There are some problems that politicians can't fix. In St. Vincent right now, they're blaming politics. Oh, the crime situation is terrible in St. Vincent. Uh, welcome, puppy. <laughs> I mean, at the end of it, they say the crime situation is very terrible in St. Vincent. And Ralph Gonzalez is to blame. And Friday, they're saying he to blame. And everybody's saying who to blame. Let me tell you something. The problem in the world today is a spiritual problem. And let me tell you something, a doctorate in political science cannot fix the problem. A doctorate in international relations and trade cannot fix the problem. The only thing that can change the world is Jesus Christ. And if we surrender our lives to Jesus, God can turn our situations around. God can turn Grenada around. What we need is not another political party. What we need is Jesus to govern our lives from now and forevermore. So Naaman came to his, with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Put the next verse there, I love it too. Read with me. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Pastor Gittens. Naaman went with all his entourage. If he was in our contemporary age, he would come with some Prados and some BMWs or some Mercedes Benz or some Vol Volvos and big time vehicles and Cadillac STS and SRS and all them kind of thing there. And the man had every, his whole entourage of vehicles because he was a five-star general. 
and he got to the man of God, Pastor Isaacs, and the man came with his entourage to the man of God, expecting the man of God to lay out the red carpet for him and treat him like a five-star general. But the man of God did not even come outside. The man of God sent a messenger to him and tell him, go tell the man, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. Let me tell you something, no matter how educated you are and accomplished you are, God does not respect your accolades and your education and your experience when you come to the feet of Jesus. All of us are sinners in need of a savior. God does not look at how qualified you are or who is president and who is director and who is minister of this and minister of that and who is elder. Anybody who comes to Jesus, we are equal at the feet of Jesus Christ. Who am I preaching to tonight? I say, who am I preaching to tonight? That's why I tell people, God, you, you cannot impress God with what you have. Talk to me, no man. That's why I tell him in church as a pastor. I have one church now. And I tell him every time, when election time comes, don't tell me about what the person can do. Ask me and tell me that they have been with the Lord. Are, are you still with me? Because I tell people, when you're anointed by God, God uses you regardless. I remember, I tell people every time, I remember one of the top evangelists in the Caribbean came to a place in, in, in the Grenadines and preached whole time for four or five weeks and called people like crazy. Nobody came to be baptized. And then they took a farmer. I said they took a farmer in St. Vincent. Sent him the same place. A man who cannot even speak proper English, Pastor. Right. The man said, God works in mischievous ways. <laughs> Not mysterious ways. <laughs> the man said, God works in mischievous ways. The man cannot even have subject and verb agreement properly. When the man said, it's a high day in Israel, he says, a high day in Israel. <laughs> the man cannot even speak properly, the man, but the man called people, and the man called upon the name of the Lord, and the spirit of God moved in that place, and more than 30 something persons gave their heart over to Jesus Christ, and people said, how could that happen? I tell him it's not about the man, it's about Jesus Christ. Hey, are you still with me in the house of the Lord? I tell people every time, sometimes we big up man because of our abilities, and our eloquence, and so forth, but God does not look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And when God is ready to move, he will use anybody to accomplish his will. If I'm talking truth, man, somebody say amen in the house of the Lord. God does not respect people for what they have. And Naaman trying to buy the man. And looking impressive. Humble yourself, boy. I go send a messenger to you. And I go send you to wash yourself. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. Are you still with me? Elisha told him, if you want to live, you need to be washed. Bang somebody next to you, tell him you need to be washed, neighbor. <laughs> hey, if you want to be renewed, you need to be washed. <laughs> the Bible makes it clear that for someone to make it into the kingdom, they need to be born of water and of the spirit. Come on, somebody say amen in the house of the Lord. John chapter 3 and verse 5 puts it nicely. It says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be what? Born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You see tonight, brothers and sisters, baptism, the water of God, is a burial. I said it's a burial. And death must precede a burial. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12 puts it nicely. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12 puts it nicely. It says, buried with him in baptism, wherein we also, he had risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. Paul says, Paul says, if you want, baptism is a burial. That's why I tell people, baptism is no sprinkling. Talk to me, talk to me. The word for baptism in the Greek it, it, it implies a, an, immers an immersion, immersing oneself into water. You can't dash water on people and say you're baptized. You have to bring them under the water. You don't bury people above ground. Anybody, anybody hope? As a matter of fact, there are certain guidelines and certain guidelines that you must comply with and certain, certain requirements that you must abide by when you, be, when you bury people in Grenada and in the Caribbean. You must make sure in St. Vincent, they say six feet. 
You have to dig up the hole and cover them properly. You never bury somebody and see them with their leg poking out. <laughs> or you bury them and you see something still exposed. No. When someone is dead, they are going to be buried. And baptism is, a, is an identifying mark that someone has died. Hey, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I said baptism signifies that you have died. But the good news is you do not just die and stay down. You die to your sins, but you are alive unto Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah in the house of the Lord. The person who plans to be baptized must be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. Put the thing there. What does it say? Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. So watch it now, watch it now. Let's get done with it. The sad reality is that we want the change, but we do not want to abide by the terms and conditions. Are you still with me? Naaman wanted to be renewed, but he wanted it on his own terms. And that's what takes place a lot of times. People want to tell God how they want to be changed. Anyone anyway, still with so you say, well, listening to the sermon is good enough. Oh, I don't need to be baptized. God says, he that believeth and is baptized. Not, or is he that is believes and. You see, belief is the precursor at the end of the day. And after you, are be you believe, then you are baptized to show that you have believed. And that's why I said to you earlier this week, talk is cheap. I said, talk is cheap. Anybody can talk. But you have to back up your talk with actions. Anybody still with me in the house of the Lord? And when the call is made, that's why you come to the altar and surrender. Because it's more than saying amen and hallelujah. It's putting your actions where your mouth is. If I'm talking to somebody, say amen in the house of the Lord. So watch it now, watch it now. Let's get down to business. I don't want to keep you here all night. Second Kings chapter 5 verses 11 and 12 says, Second Kings chapter 5 verses 11 and 12. But Naaman was wroth. Man became angry. And went away. And said, behold. Are you still with me? I said, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Hold on, they don't go to 12 yet. <laughs> the man came to be healed and the man don't come with how he wants to be healed. It's like <laughs> the man don't picture how it's supposed to happen. I will come, he will come out, he will call on the name of the Lord, his God, strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. The man doesn't say, Pastor, the man doesn't say, this is exactly how it's going to happen. God does not do what we want him to do. God does not answer to us, we answer to him. God is sovereign, he's in charge. And he does what he wants to do. Can I come and tell you? And that's why I tell people, people always assume that you have to have a certain thing to do. And they want to tell God how they want him to do things in their life. And, and because we are so bent on entertainment. That sometimes we don't. You see. you see, Entertainment is not obedience. Right. No matter how entertaining and excited you become. What makes true worship worship is obedience. Yeah. Yeah. To obey is still better than to sacrifice. And I tell people every time at the end of it, you can sing and preach all how you want. You can sing how many hallelujahs you want. At the end of the day, God is not impressed by your hallelujahs. He sees, he's impressed by your obedience to his will. Anybody still with me the house of the Lord? So when he calls you to the altar, obey! <laughs> When he tells you your life needs to change, obey. When the call is made, instead of looking what people are doing, obey and come to the altar. Because the blessing does not come in saying amen. The blessing comes in obedience. If I'm talking truth, say amen tonight. And nowadays people always want flair and excitement and entertainment to say the spirit of God is there. Let me tell you something. I'm not impressed by them thing. Let me tell you. Excitement don't move me. Even if I'm, I'm a charismatic preacher, these things don't move me. Because I understand you can be charismatic and still be lost. It's obedience to God. Let me tell you, I've seen some things in my life. That's why I don't get impressed when people shout in hallelujah. You know? I remember Sunday night, Pastor Gittins. I left church, my brother and I. 
And we were, we are musicians. Well, I'm not a musician, musician. I play a thing off and on. Um, so I wouldn't consider myself, I wouldn't disres disrespect them fellas by calling myself a musician. I play when no musician is available. And I, but my brother is a musician. You know, trained and everything, plays in church and so forth and so forth consistently. I preach, he plays. I only play when no one is there. When all the musicians stay home and they need somebody to fill in. And I remember Sunday night, we were finished church at the Roseau SDA church, a Sunday night service. And we were heading home, my brother and I, from church. And we were passing next to a church that was, you know, having worship. And because we are musicians, we like music. We heard some, we heard a keyboard playing, man. And we said the band song real good. So I said, boy, Josiah, who is the first elder of the St. Joseph Church in Dominica now, I said, Josiah, let me go and see what keyboard making them noise there. Because my goodness, it's some good. <laughs> so we went and we saw the church. So we decided to pick and see what was happening. So Josiah picking, I picking. I want to see, I cannot see properly. So I push Josiah to see a little better. And he, I push him a little too hard. <laughs> so by the time we recognized, it was a cock triton. <laughs> it was when the cock triton had just come out. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was the hot thing. You know when the cock came out, the cock triton? It was the keyboard that all keyboard men wanted. <laughs> And they, that cock triton. And when we saw it, we said, wow, the thing looked good. The pastor, it was a woman preacher. She preached and she saw my brother. And she said, the Lord has sent a man. <laughs> true story, true story. <laughs> true story. So Josiah said, me? She said, young man, come. The Lord has given you a word for his people tonight. I said to my brother, well, if the Lord give you a word... Go and give the people the word. Who am I to stand between you and the Lord and his people? Go and give them the word. My brother said, Brent, I have no word. But I said, obey, go. My brother went up to the front of the church. Church full to capacity, if you see people. Educated people, all kind of people, church people dress up. And my brother went at the front of the church. And the lady looked at my brother and she said, say what the Lord told you to say. And my brother is speechless. And I'm frightened for my brother now. Because I'm outside the church looking and I'm saying to myself, man, just say something. <laughs> just say something to embarrass the family. So, well, what made the thing worse, Pastor Isaac, is that the lady took her hand and she hit my brother on the head and yelling, bam, speak in tongues. And my brother could not speak in tongues. I've never heard my brother speak in tongues before. The lady pulled back again and she said, hit bam speaking tongues nothing happened i said my god this is the most embarrassing thing i've ever seen in my life and then the third time the lady went back and she grabbed my brother's head and she started trembling my brother's head and i see my brother and then when she let go my brother i heard my brother for the first time say all kind of thing and the whole church mash up and people jump in hallelujah praise the lord and so on and if you see madness in church i see people dropping down on ground and shouting hallelujah god has given them a word and hallelujah praise the lord if you see me i move from being shame to frighten one time and my brother when he done preach and says a baba babos and baba baba bas and all them kind of thing came out and wanted to touch me. I said, don't touch me. I am not worthy for you to touch me tonight. I am just a sinner saved by grace. Don't touch me with your holy self. The anointing of God was still upon you. The man said, Bren, shut up. When the lady tell me, speak in tongues, I didn't know what to say. She hit me the first time, I didn't know what to say. She hit me the second time, I didn't know what to say. When she hit me the third time, she whispered in my ears, just say, a ba -ba -ba -bo, a ba -ba -ba -ba. and what she told me to say, that is what I said. And the whole church mash up. Are you still living in the house of the Lord? Let me tell you something. God is not impressed by entertainment. You need to know God for yourself. And you need to have a relationship with God for yourself. It's not about hype. It's about substance. If I'm talking truth, somebody shout amen in the house of the Lord tonight. Oh, I tell you. Mercy, Lord. Hey, help me preach. The man vexed because the man wanted hype. 
He wanted Elisha to rest the hand on his head and say, Abba, 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 and I tie my tie, you tie my bow tie, and I shoot about a hand, but about a dodge. Are you still with me? And then make the man feel all good. But let me tell you something. It's not about talk. It's about obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. You can't be speaking in tongues and sleeping in people, man. You can't be speaking in tongues and stealing what your neighbor has. At the end of the day, it's better you keep your mouth shut and trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey tonight. Help me preach this thing. Hey. Put the next verse there. Put the next verse there for me. Are not Abana and Fapa, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away. He turned and went away in a rage. There are some people tonight who will want to leave the tent in rage. And go away when God has called them to come to the altar. Because they want to surrender to God on their own terms. They want to choose their own river. They want to choose their own mood of deliverance. But God said there is no shortcut. <laughs> he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So watch it now. Let me make this point there. And run because I don't want the time to run away from me. Many persons will be lost. Because they want salvation on their own terms. I will say it again. I said many people will be lost. Because they want salvation on their own terms. They want to still go to carnival and go to church. They want to still be with the people they man and still go to church. They want to thief all the money and still go to church. They want salvation on their own terms. But when you come to God, God is in charge. And what he says to you do it. Hey, tell your neighbor next to you, neighbor, just do it. Whatever God says to you, just do it. When he speaks to you and he gives you a word, just do it. Listen to the voice of God. But let me tell you something, what I've learned. When you obey him, he blesses you. Oh, I wish somebody could testify, man. You know, sometimes we say these things and we just say amen. But I wish two people could testify and just say, Pastor, thank you, Jesus. I've learned that when I trust him and I obey him, he blesses me. Anybody still with me? I've come to recognize when I put him to the test and I obey his will. Are you still with me? God blesses me and he opened doors for me. The Bible says, while we do his good will, he abides with us still. If you know that somebody say amen in the house of the Lord tonight. Now watch it, now watch it. The man said, I done. But thank God, there were people with him who understood that if he wanted to be healed, he needed to obey. First Kings 5 verse 13. It says, and his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean. The servant said, father, master, the man did not ask you to do anything ridiculous. The man, if the man had told you to do some big thing to get money or attention or clout or reputation, you would have done it. But the only thing the man is saying to you, just wash and be clean. You see, and I don't understand. Some people go walk from here to send judges to meet a man or a woman. They would walk all on road behind a political party. Rain, sun, lightning, thunder. They're not missing the meeting. But all what God is saying to you, wash and be clean and it too hard. That's why I tell people you have to obey God rather than man. <laughs> a lady said to me, Master Brent, after all what I do, I, I carry people to the polling station. I, if my own vehicle, I burn my own gas to let them go and vote for the party. And now they get in power. They don't want to give me child this scholarship. They give it to somebody else. I said, sister, that is the problem. Too many of us want the political party to help us. I don't go to them. 
God will supply all the needs. And let me tell you something. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to Jesus. Not, not a thousand cattle. A cattle on a thousand hills. Are you still with me? So let me tell you something. Whenever I need help, I say, Lord, just take one of the cattle. Them. Take one of the cattle them and help your boy. Because let me tell you something. Nobody can provide for you like Jesus. Hey, somebody let me preach this thing, man. Nobody can take care of you like Jesus. And when Jesus takes care of you, you don't have to pay any favors to anybody. Are you still with me? No, you aren't going to be afraid that they go take you down after they put you up. If God before you, no devil in hell can be against you. And he will set you up and he will keep you up. If I'm talking truth, say amen in the house of the Lord. You see, you need people in your life. I say you need people in your life that will hold you accountable. I want people in my life, Pastor Gittins, who will hold me accountable rather than stroke my ego. Talk to me now, talk to me now. You see, serving God may not be popular, but it is profitable. Oh, help me preach the thing now, man. I said serving God may not be popular, but it is profitable. If you believe that and you have experienced that, say amen now. Let me tell you, David, David said it, but David says, I have been young. No, I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging for bread. When God is in charge of your life, God takes care of you. Hey, help me preach the thing. I tell people every time, when I got baptized as a young man, young boy, my life changed immediately. I said, my life changed immediately. Everything started changing for me. I moved from a troubled child, aggressive, and full of myself, and causing trouble in my house and stoning house, to a child of the living God. God started opening doors for me. I said, God started opening doors for me. I can tell you my story. Pastor Gittins, I was at the place that I couldn't speak. People who knew me before I was baptized, they up to now, if I go to Dominica, they would talk with a, lips, a lisp and they would mock, mock me all to this day. When I go home, they told me, say cat like milk. I said, clack, clack, click. <laughs> because I couldn't speak properly. <laughs> all the time, my brother's name is Josiah and I could not pronounce J, so I used to say, Josiah. <laughs> And all this time, people used to laugh and say, oh, he will never be anything in life because I couldn't speak properly. I had, I, had, I had speech problems and so on. But I did not go to no speech therapist. When I put my hands in the hands of God and I gave my heart over to Jesus, God changed everything around. I can now pronounce everything I have to pronounce. I can now be a pastor and preach the everlasting gospel across the world because it's not by might, it is not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. And when you put your hands in the hands of God he changes your life around if I'm talking truth somebody say amen in the house of the Lord tonight and tonight you could get that opportunity to experience the power in Jesus Christ as well the man said man obey stop being big and obey humble yourself and obey and when you obey you may lose some but you will win more Talk to me. I remember in 2006, I close in now, we had a crusade in Guyana. Right in Guyana, where Family Fest Fellowship came from. Right on the East Coast. And there was a, a Pentecostal pastor who came to the crusade. I could see her. She heard the Sabbath message and baptism. And the lady came at the end, she said one of her members just invited her and she decided to just show up. All right, all right. And she came to the end of the message. At the end of the service, she came to me and she said, I mean, she said, I'm Brent, I'm telling you. You know, because I was one of the Bible workers on the field as well. She said, Brent, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm impressed to just obey because God is speaking to me and he's telling me to obey. Talk to me. She said, but I will lose everything. I said, oh, you mean? She said she would lose her ministerial license from Pawi. <laughs> she would lose this and she would lose that and she has so much to lose. I said to her, I cannot tell you what to do because I'm just a man. But if you're convinced that the Lord is speaking to you, not only will the Lord take care of you, but he will give you double for your trouble. And yet the thing, yet the thing, 
We baptized her. I said we baptized her. And many others with her because they heard the Sabbath truth and, they, and everything. And they accepted the truth and they obeyed. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt. Her life became better as a result. Let me tell you something. You cannot lose by obeying God. Anytime you obey God, he must bless you. I tell people every time, if you want to tie God's hand, obey him. If you want to force God into a, a, a spot, be faithful. Because if you're faithful, he must keep his promise. If you, are, if you trust and obey him, he must bless you. If you put him first and you keep his commandments, he must cause you to ride on the high places of the earth. If God be for you and you obey the voice of God, God must take care of you. So watch this, let me bring this home. So after they talk to Naaman, the Bible says, Naaman went down. Verse 14. Then he went down. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God and his flesh, I said, and his flesh came again. Oh, mercy, Lord. I said, Elder, his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. No, 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 no. Whoo! What excites me is that when he obeyed and he dipped in the water, God did not bring him to the place he was before he got leprosy. God gave him the best skin that he had in his life since he was a child. Have you ever seen a baby's skin? Let me tell you, so a baby's skin is so plump and nice and smooth. Are you still living? spotless without blemish and so on but God Bible says when the man went down in the water God restored the man to his baby skin clean and fresh baby oil kind of skin when God is in control of your life and you obey him he gives you everything that the devil stole from you and more all what you need to do is obey him I say, all what you need to do is obey him. Watch it. Let me bring this home now. An old man immersed in the Jordan and emerged as a new man. The water did not save him. Obedience saved him. Oh, talk to me, man. Talk to me, man. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. I said the water did not save him. It was not just the water. God could have used anything. God didn't need the waters of the Jordan. God could have used the same waters he was talking about to heal him. But what God wanted to test was his obedience. And what saved him was the faith he had in the word of God to obey the voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you obey the voice of God tonight, God will restore you. If you obey the voice of God tonight, God will transform you. If you obey the voice of God tonight, God will set you up for great things. All he wants you to do is trust him and obey him. And the Bible puts it clearly. Our last text for tonight. Mark. Put it there for me. The Bible says. Mark 16, 15 and 16. He saith unto them. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Tonight. What I'm offering you is better than wet fat. I say what I'm offering you tonight is better than wet fat. Because when you go to a wet fat, you go clean and you come back dirty. <laughs> but when you go to Jesus and he dips you in the water of baptism, you come dirty and you live clean. <laughs> You come broken and you leave healed. You come forsaken and you leave blessed. You come broken and you are mended by the blood of Jesus Christ. If God could do it for Naaman, God can do it for you. Oh, somebody help me, help me, help me preach. I said, I said, I said, if God could do it for Naaman, he can do it for you tonight. Because I still believe 
that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath that flood can lose all. I said can lose what? All the guilty stains. Tonight God is saying I am giving you something better. I am giving you something more glorious. I'm giving you a chance to get your life back together. Too many people are rotten from the inside out. And you are putting on a show for people. But you are dying on the inside. God is saying to you, tonight is your night to be clean. Tonight is your night to be restored. Tonight is your night to have a better hope. Tonight is your night for a second chance. Tonight is your night to be restored as you have never messed up in the first place. Tonight I give you Jesus. Tonight I give you baptism. Tonight I give you the cleansing stream. Tonight I give you the fountain that is filled with blood. Tonight I give you that, that, that stream that flows into fountains of living water. God is saying to you tonight, it is yours. You got to take it. If you want to say tonight, Lord, thank you for your word. Just wave your hands with me wherever you are. Oh, praise the Lord. Hands are going up everywhere. Father, we glorify your name tonight. Lord, we magnify your name tonight. For indeed, you're an awesome God. We thank you for your moving in this place tonight. We thank you for your manservant. We thank you for the way you've used him in a very profound way. With clarity of speech and thought. That the youngest child could have understood what he was saying. We thank you for the response to the gospel. We thank you for the spirit of obedience that pervades this tent tonight. And Lord, we first pray for all those who came to the altar wanting to submit themselves to Jesus, even in baptism. We pray for the children because we know the devil is after them. We pray for every boy, every girl who came to the altar. We know that decision tonight will be the devil will attempt to counteract it, but in the name of Jesus, we come against all demonic forces tonight. And we pray, Lord, that we will break the spirit of the evil one. And we pray that the spirit of obedience will prevail in the name of Jesus. We pray for the young ladies who have come. Lord, you know them. They have decided to take a new stand for Jesus tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll touch them in a very special way. Lord, young men are sometimes hesitant to come, but tonight many have come to the altar. In the name of Jesus, we come against everything and anything that is, is still standing as a stumbling block for young men to give their life to Jesus. Oh Lord, there are many who are here, but Lord, the, 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 the stag and the, the, you know, the man's beard and, and alcohol and, and drugs are still standing in a way. Uh, level of immorality is still standing, but Father, we, we come against anything that is going to stand against persons who want to give their life to Jesus. Lord, there are persons who are here, I believe, but maybe this a common relationship, Lord. Whatever it is, Lord, we just pray tonight that you give them victory in the name of Jesus. There are some who have come, but they're not sure why. They, they, they don't know how they will make it, but they have come. We thank you for the obedience. And Lord, I pray that you'll open the way so that they'll whether, whether since we know way tonight, there shall be a way and persons shall submit eventually to Jesus. Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise and we give you honor for what you are doing and what you will yet do under this tent to your manservant. We praise you, Lord. Lord, many others have come. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a relationship issue. There are parents who have come for the, on behalf of the children. There, there are wives who have come on behalf of their husbands. There are husbands who have come on behalf of the wives. And, and Lord, there, there are um, brothers who have come on behalf of um, brothers and sisters. Lord, whatever the need is here, we, we come and we present it in the name of Jesus to you. And we know, Lord, that, that, that there is nothing that is too much for you, Lord. Every situation, you can handle it, Lord. So we laid all out to you tonight. And we pray, Lord, that you give us the faith to believe that once we ask it, it shall be done. 
So tonight, even as we are about to leave this place, we pray that we'll extend our heart of our hands in faith and claim those promises in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have been searching for the breakthrough for a long time. And tonight is the breakthrough. Breakthrough in health, breakthrough in finance, breakthrough in relationship, breakthrough in salvation. Give us a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. In Jesus' name, let your people say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Tell all the world worship him in all the name.